Hey guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So tonight was the Fallout show from Bound for Glory, and uh, overall it was a very solid show. Uh, pretty action-packed from the start to finish. Uh, we got it seemed like we got some new developing feuds and stories. Um, so let's get right into it. So we open the show with uh, Josh Matthews and Jeremy Borash in the ring. And uh, they're kind of giving a rundown of what's going to happen on tonight's episode of Impact. So after that, we get a recap of Bound for Glory, which is not really a surprise. Um, makes sense that they would show everything. And then the current global champion comes out to the ring, Eli Drake, along with Christopher Adonis. And uh, Adonis grabs the microphone and tells everyone that they need to give him and the champ res the respect that they deserve. He uh, praises Eli in every which way. Um, Eli grabs the mic and says that uh, he basically did exactly what he told everybody he was going to do at Bound for Glory. He said that Johnny Impact went into Bound for Glory thinking that he was going to win the title, and uh, he did not. And he talks about Alberto and his interference in the match and how he, when he hit Eli in the head with the title, he got blood all over his title, and Eli had to have five stitches, so Eli was given the night off because of his injury, and he said, anyway, it doesn't matter because there's nobody in the back that's left to face me. So at this point, Petey Williams' music hits, and he comes out, and he says, you know, uh, I've never faced you, so he says that, uh, he cha you know, he challenges Eli to a match, and uh, Eli accepts, but says, yeah, but not tonight. So uh, Petey goes down to the ring, and uh, Adonis gets in his way, rips his shirt off. Petey fights with him, knocks him down, goes into the ring, fights with Eli, and then goes for a Canadian Destroyer, and Chris Adonis pulls him out of the ring. Uh, we go to commercial and come back and learn that next week... Eli Drake will be fighting P.D. Williams, I'm guessing, for the title. I don't, I don't know if they uh, made that clear. So, after the first segment, I noticed that this really felt like an independent show. It was a very in, intimate setting. Um, you could literally hear if one person made a remark in on camera... Um, which is good because it, it's it kind of feels one with the audience and uh, the crowd seemed really hyped for the entire show, which is really good. They seemed into it right from the get go when they first came out, um, and they were into most of the matches, chanting back and forth, and uh, yeah. So <laughs> at this point, Jeremy Borash and uh, and Josh Matthews were sitting at the commentary desk talking about the upcoming match, which was Eddie Edwards and... Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. It was Matt Seidel and uh, Sanjay Dutt. And all of a sudden, Jimmy Jacobs walks up to the desk and uh, they're, they're like, Oh, what are you doing? We have a match to, to get to. And he says, Well, I, I came to watch. And so he's on commentary with them. And uh, yeah, so the match starts with... Like I said, Sanjay Dutt versus Matt Seidel, and this was a good match. They gave this uh, match a lot of time, actually. We uh, went through one commercial break. So, like, halfway through the match, uh, Jimmy Jacobs gets up after being disgusted with uh, both Borash and Matthews. So, I, I guess he's a part of the company now. I've heard different rumors, one that he's working as a producer, one that he's working with talent, and if he's going to be an on-screen person, I don't know. He's here. I'm glad he definitely brings faces where he goes. Um, obviously, after his departure, he had a lot of buzz around him, so that's good for him to be an impact. Um, like I said, this was a good match. Uh, Matt Seidel ends up getting the win with a shooting star press. Um, surprisingly, he worked on Sanjay's legs, I guess, the majority of the match to keep him grounded, which makes sense. Um, after the match, surprisingly, EC3 comes out. And he uh, he kind of comes out to congratulate uh, Matt Seidel on his victory. And he says, you know, Matt, you always win, 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 win. But uh, when it comes to the big matches, you uh, you seem to choke. And, you know, he basically calls him a choke artist and says that, you know, not to toot my own horn. But and he goes on about himself. And then he says that uh, 
Matt Seidel is a great wrestler, but he lacks the killer instinct. And he said, uh, <laughs> maybe in a, uh, in another life, he would have been reborn a winner. So I'm guessing uh, the the crowd was chanting for a grand championship match between the two, which I'm guessing this is a start to a new feud, and uh, I'm interested to see where they go. After this, we get a Global Wrestling Network flashback from back in, I guess it was right when the Six-Sided Ring made its debut in Impact, um, or in TNA. Uh, I think there was uh, Garza... Garza Jr.'s father was wrestling in a match against Team Canada. So they gave us a good couple minutes uh, look into the match. It might have even been the whole match. I really wasn't paying attention. And that brought us to the GHC Heavyweight Championship match with Eddie Edwards defending against uh, Phantasma. And this was a really good match. Um, much like Eddie Edwards' matches in Pro Wrestling Noah in Japan, um, they were given a good amount of time, a lot of high flying, a lot of back and forth. This was a completely even match, and uh, they noted that during the match, and I believe this was the first time the title has been defended in North America, with Eddie Edwards being the first North or maybe non any outsider from Japan first champion. Um, but yeah, like I said, this was a really good match. A lot of close calls, completely back and forth, even matchup, and. Uh, Eddie Edwards eventually hits the Boston knee party and then hits the diehard Flosion for the win. Uh, after the match, him and Phantasma show a, a sh sign of respect or a show of respect for each other, which is good to see considering the events that led to this match with uh, Phantasma hitting Eddie Edwards with a pile driver on the apron back at Bound for Glory. And uh, go to commercial and we come back to. Uh, OVE and Sammy Callahan in a match against uh, Atlas, Burke, and Steel. I'm guessing local talent here. Um, this was a squash match. The uh, OVE and Callahan had great intensity and just they were really into it. Hopefully getting the crowd into it. They were starting to chant for OVE a little here and there, but nothing too crazy. They, uh, they, they hit a finisher, which I'm guessing the three of them have used it in other shows where um i guess it was dave had uh his opponent uh set up in electric chair position and then jay chris was on sammy callahan's shoulders in electric chair position and jay chris jumps off and hits a cutter on the opponent down i guess they called it the all-seeing eye uh that got the victory and then after the match lax shows up they show up on one side to get ov and callahan's uh attention homicide shows up behind him jumps in the ring they brawl uh homicide goes for like a vertebraker and sammy's able to escape and then we learn later on to, in the night that next week it'll be ov and sammy callahan versus lax and homicide um so looking forward to this like i said bringing you guys like sammy callahan in does nothing but good things for the company um He's one of those independent guys that really has a lot of buzz around him and I would say a pretty big following. So uh, after that, we get a interview with uh, Hakeem Zayn, who was the winner of the Global Forged competition. Um, he's being interviewed by McKenzie, and he's sitting down, and just McKenzie interviews him at, a, I guess it was a little table in the back, and Johnny Impact comes flying in and... Uh, the, he, he, oh wait no I'm sorry that was later on he came in and said uh, that he's here to kick Alberto's ass for causing him the title at Impact at uh, Bound for Glory um, we saw him earlier uh, sh uh, Impact that is show up outside and kind of charge into the arena um, then we go out to Border City Wrestling where Ali is facing Casey Spinelli um, I believe Spinelli is going to be making her Impact debut on one of the tapings that was rumored before. I don't know if that's official or not. I did not look at any spoilers. Um, but this was a decent match. Uh, a couple of good uh, back and forth segments, uh, close calls. Uh, I know at one point Allie hit the code breaker and got a two count. Spinelli hit a fisherman suplex, got a two count. And then uh, Spinelli misses a moonsault and Allie hits her with a Death Valley driver for the win. Not a common move these days. 
Uh, Spinelli did a good job selling for her throughout the match. Um, they really seem to be building on Allie, considering the fact that she really has a good, uh, I guess, fan base behind her. I mean, it was kind of similar to the way Bailey was built in NXT, but moving her to the main roster kind of totally screwed that up completely. But I, I think they're kind of that would be a good uh, comparison for Allie and uh, hopefully building her up for a future knockout title reign. Um, then we go back to the impact zone and outside, I guess I, I guess I shouldn't call it the impact zone because it's, they're just still at event at the uh, pavilion right now. But uh, Alberto's outside and he gets told that uh, Johnny Impact is looking for him and he just laughs it off. Then I guess we go, I, I guess this took place at Border City Wrestling, but Allie was outside and uh, she was talking about the big announcement that Gail Kim has for next week. So I'm guessing that's going to be something to do with either her retiring or vacating the title or having another match. I'm not sure. We'll see where that goes. Like I said, I, I would assume they're going to be bringing more knockouts, at least for the tapings here, considering Taya not being able to make it. Uh, the departure of Taryn Terrell, and yeah. So hopefully they are able to build their division with Canadian talent. I know they, like I said, with Casey Spinelli, and uh, there was rumored Tessa Blanchard, but I don't know if that was anything but rumors. Um, but yeah, this was all we got from the knockouts this week, so hopefully we get more from them in the upcoming weeks. And so we go backstage where Mackenzie is speaking to Alberto. Now, this is the part I was talking about before, where he's sitting down and she's talking to him. And Johnny Impact jumps over a table and kind of hits him through uh, a backdrop. they both sliding around on it. Um, they brawl backstage, end up outside. At one point, they met up with Braxton Sutter and Caleb Conley, and all four of them brawled. Um... They fight back into the building, and Al Patron uh, climbs a ladder onto like a indoor bathroom uh, building, and Impact uh, jumps on like a soda machine to catch him up top. The two are fighting up top. I think we go to commercial and come back, and oh no, no, this is before the commercial break. Uh, Al Patron is is hanging on the building by his fingers. Johnny stomps his fingers, he falls off, security comes out, then Johnny does a diving crossbody off the building onto all of the security and Al Patron, um, and we go to commercial and come back, they're still fighting, uh, they make their way to ringside, security breaks it up, Alberto gets on the mic and starts complaining about the company again, and so on and so forth, and Alberto says, you know, if you want to fight in the ring, you just have to go in the ring and uh, let's do this. So Johnny gets in the ring and Alberto pretends like he's going to fight him, but then backs away and starts going up the stage. Johnny grabs the microphone and he makes a comment about Al Patron. Uh, Alberto goes in the ring. Security comes in. They try to break it up. Alberto ends up standing tall at the end of the show. I guess he had Johnny in like an arm bar in the ropes, so... Not my way I would have ended the show. Honestly, had they ended it with the GHC title match, it would have been a lot better. I'm not really a huge fan of ending the shows with segments like this or like they did at the pay-per-view. Had they just had Alberto come and interfere in the match rather than have him cut a long promo in the beginning, it would have made a lot more sense and then have that promo on Impact to open the show. I don't know. I think that makes a little too much sense. But yeah, that was Impact. Aside from the, I guess, main event, it was a really solid show. Um, yeah, I'd like to hear everybody's thoughts. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you like about the show, the review I do. If you hate it, love it, whatever. I'd like some feedback. But uh, yeah, so I will see you guys next week for my Impact review. If you like what you've seen here, Please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.